On Thursday, a fast attack submarine from the U.S. Navy made its way to Cuba's Guantanamo Bay, coinciding with the arrival of a Russian fleet in Havana just a day prior. The U.S. Helena, a Los Angeles-class nuclear-powered submarine, embarked on what was described as a routine port visit, while it carried out its global maritime security and national defense mission, as per the U.S. Southern Command's SOUDHCOM statement on social media. Cuban armed forces welcomed the Russian Rodin fleet's missile frigate Admiral Gorshkov with a 21-cannon salute as it led the Yasin N-class cruise missile submarine Kazan into Havana Bay for a stopover schedule from June 12 to 17. Cuba's foreign ministry noted earlier in the week that none of the visiting vessels carried nuclear weapons, emphasizing that the visit, which took place roughly 100 miles south of the Florida Keys, posed no threat to the region. Photographed in the Atlantic Ocean on March 24, 2016, the U.S. Helena docked in Guantanamo Bay on June 13 one day after the Russian fleet's arrival. Built during the Cold War, Los Angeles-class submarines like the U.S. Helena are armed with torpedoes, Tomahawk, and Harpoon missiles, targeting both land and sea. Their nuclear propulsion allows for virtually unlimited operational range, and they can carry enough provisions to remain on station for up to three months, a period known as the vessel's endurance. Just three weeks prior, the Helena was docked at Naval Station Norfolk in Virginia. The specific locations of submarines are rarely disclosed by the United States and other nations, but surfacing such a stealth vessel can be seen as a significant military signal to potential adversaries. Given the timing of the Helena's arrival, it is plausible that it traveled through the same waters used by the Russian Northern Fleet ships. So UTH2M's statement clarified that the vessel's location and transit were pre-planned. But before we continue, if you're enjoying this briefing, please kindly support this channel by liking and clicking on the subscribe button below to subscribe to this channel and to help you to learn of your preferences and enable you receive new video updates every time they are uploaded on this channel. Thank you. Let's get going. A U.S. defense official informed Newsweek that American and Canadian naval and air forces had been actively monitoring the Russian ships during their Atlantic crossing. Pentagon Press Secretary Sabrina Singh remarked on the Russian port call in Cuba, saying, We've been tracking the Russians' plans for this. This is not a surprise. She further noted that the U.S. continuously monitors foreign vessels operating near its territorial waters, stressing that while these activities are taken seriously, they do not pose a threat to the United States. Russian military expert suggestions of Kremlin plans for nuclear strikes on U.S. ships added to the broader geopolitical tensions. From 2013 to 2020, Russian ships made annual visits to Cuba. This week's visit follows President Vladimir Putin's statement about taking asymmetrical steps in response to President Joe Biden's decision to allow Ukraine to strike inside Russia using U.S. supplied weapons. Biden and Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky met at the G7 summit in Italy on June 13 and signed a 10-year bilateral security agreement. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan highlighted the significance of this agreement as a milestone in the U.S.-Ukraine partnership, indicating a long-term commitment and sending a strong signal to Russia about the coalition's resolve. The U.S. Helena's arrival at the U.S. naval base in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, was part of planned routine activities, according to an official from the U.S. Southern Command in Doral. The decision to deploy the U.S. Helena, a nuclear-powered fast-attack submarine, was reconsidered in light of Russia's concurrent plans to send several combat vessels, including the advanced nuclear submarine Kazan, to the region for military exercises. This sparked a debate among Navy and administration officials about whether to proceed with the Helena deployment or alter the plans. Despite concerns that another U.S. submarine visit to Guantanamo Bay could escalate tensions, especially given Cuba's displeasure over a similar event the previous year, the Navy ultimately decided that changing or canceling the deployment would set a poor precedent. The Teso UHCOM official emphasized that there was no reason to alter routine activity in response to Russian maneuvers, and Cuba had been notified of the Helena's arrival. The internal debate highlighted the sensitivity surrounding military maneuvers that might typically be seen as routine. Statements from the Cuban, Russian, and U.S. governments reiterated that their actions were not intended to threaten adversaries. However, heightened tensions between Moscow and Washington over U.S. support for Ukraine and Russia's deployment of naval combat vessels near U.S. shores underscored the significance of these movements. Jake Sullivan, the U.S. National Security Advisor, pointed out that the current Russian exercises were notable due to the inclusion of the Kazan, a submarine not previously associated with such port visits. He remarked that while the presence of Russian naval assets in Havana is not new, the situation was being closely monitored. The Russian flotilla might head south through the Caribbean to Venezuela the following week, adding another layer of complexity to the already strained geopolitical landscape. This series of events exemplifies the intricate dance of international military posturing and the careful calibration required to avoid escalating tensions while asserting strategic presence. The deployment of the U.S. Helena, set against the backdrop of Russian naval activity, illustrates the ongoing global maritime chess game where routine missions can quickly become focal points of international scrutiny and geopolitical maneuvering. 
The juxtaposition of U.S. and Russian naval movements near Cuba reflects broader themes of power projection, regional influence, and the persistent undercurrents of Cold War era rivalry, all playing out in contemporary geopolitical theater. That's where we wrap things up for the time being. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.